Earth Forbidden Secrets Part 1 Searching for the Past Lovingly Dedicated to My son, Daniel, my mother, Pauline and my father, Bill Earth Forbidden History Part 1 Searching for the Past By Maxwell Egan Author's Note The main goal of this book is to provide information to people, much of it that is sometimes quite well hidden. It is my sincere hope that everyone who reads this work will be inspired to question things, and to search out these, and other new truths and discoveries for themselves. When I first started this book, it was my desire to cover a really huge variety of topics and put the vast amount of hard-to-get information all in one epic work. However, after several months of work the word epic began to take on a new meaning for me and the sheer volume and intertwining nature of the text became far too cumbersome to be deemed in any way manageable in a single book and, though the information herein is still quite vast, I was forced to remove several chapters of work. Due to the detailed nature of the topics I sacrificed in this slicing process, it is more than likely that each slice chapter will now be further divided into smaller portions before then being expanded upon into a number of separate volumes to be released at later dates. The principal source of the biblical quotations in this book is the original Hebrew version of the Old Testament from the 1992 Jerusalem Bible. This is because when all is said and done, all other versions of the texts are simply the translations and interpretations of various individuals and ultimately it is what is written in the original Hebrew version that really counts. All English biblical quotes are taken from the King James Version. The full bibliography of other sources is also provided at the close of the book. I do not ask or expect anyone to blindly believe what is written within the pages of this book without investigating all the evidence for themselves, and in fact I very much urge you to do so. In the meantime however, I hope you find this book informative and enjoyable and I thank you in advance for taking this time to read it. Remember, the truth is always out there somewhere, and sometimes, right in front of us too, if we would only notice. If you are thinking one year ahead, plant seeds. If you are thinking ten years ahead, plant a tree. If you are thinking one hundred years ahead, educate the people. Chinese Emperor Quan Su, 5th century BC. Prologue. It has been often said that it is only by gaining a true understanding of the Earth's past that we can ever hope to find the vital key to understanding its future and, in turn, our own. Such notions have always caused mankind to ponder himself, our planet, the stars, the universe, and beyond, but much of this thought invariably returns to thoughts of the past and the nature of God. Mankind has always wondered such things and ever since the dawn of our recorded history there have been countless stories and legends to tempt the matter further. Myths from the depths of time that hint of other, far more ancient civilizations, like ours in the 21st century or even better, that once dwelt in mysterious lands, some of which have long since disappeared beneath the oceans. In many of these ancient stories we read tantalizing and bizarre accounts of strange and unknown technologies tales of ancient gods, flying craft and ancient foes waging great wars against each other, wars that were fought with fantastic and devastating weapons. Over the years a great number of scholars have attempted to dispel these tales as rumors and fanciful myths yet still the stories have persisted and in a strangely unnerving reinforcement of them, we find, dotted across our planet, the remains of immensely ancient and enigmatic structures of unknown origin. And even more bizarre things. Archaeologists and explorers have uncovered amazing pyramids, megalithic stone cities and magnificent structures of intricate difficulty. Many of these structures are built in ways that are utterly unknown to us and even still defy our current levels of technical expertise. How did they get there? Who built them and what was their purpose? Do they all share a common link and if so, what is it? Strange and incongruous artifacts built by amazing and unknown technology that irrefutably dismantle the academic presentation of our history have also been found in places where they simply have no place being, and there are curious stone steels and cave paintings also depicting seemingly impossible scenes from our far distant past. So many of these types of things have now been recovered from such a variety of locations that they can no longer be simply classed as unusual artifacts and dismissed as curious. In recent years there has been a veritable storm of writers, almost reaching saturation point, 
warning of dire times to come, global war, massive earth changes, Armageddon, the fulfillment of dark prophecies and a doom that has been long foretold that will soon descend upon our world. Let's face it, it has always been easy to sell doomsday. It has been done ever since man has lived within organized communities and there is always someone who is willing to listen. But is there any tangible evidence for these claims and in what form does it take? In recent years, startling new discoveries have been made and fresh evidence has been unearthed that may help us to answer many of these and other, even more profound riddles and perhaps shed the light that has been sorely needed to illuminate many other theories. Evidence that may now at last force us to readjust our mindset and radically rethink the way we have viewed the Earth, our history and ultimately, our future. The information is as important to mankind as it is urgent but, in an almost unfathomable act of irresponsibility, it is still for the most part, being ignored by governments and academics, all over the world. The arguments and conclusions contained in this work are the accumulated result of over 25 years of investigation and personal research. Many of the arguments presented here are not new, but new discoveries however small, can at times reveal a new importance and add a new and significant relevance to old theories. Plus in order to see a larger picture, the many smaller pieces of the puzzle must first be put into order. One of the purposes of this work is to demonstrate that there is in fact, an abundant amount of evidence, much of it in full view, that proves beyond any shadow of doubt that there was indeed an advanced civilization that existed on this planet in ancient times, the traces of which can be found everywhere. There are even tantalizing hints of even more something that they may have left behind for us to help us to decipher the celestial information they deemed so important. This book will demonstrate that all mythologies and many recent discoveries in virtually all fields of science now present irrefutable evidence to us that our history is simply not what we're being led to believe. And not only that, but the powers that be know full well of this startling information but quite obviously refuse to allow the knowledge to become public. This work intends to present undeniable proof of a history that the public at large has been forbidden to see. We will then examine the implications its existence holds for our past, our present, and our future, indeed, for us all. 90% of all wars that have been fought in the last 2000 years have been waged over religion and yet all religions ultimately stem from the same source. It has been said that if all of mankind were truly educated in the singular source of all religions and in the true nature of our world and man's relation to it, there could never possibly be wars fought over doctrines described in books. The ancients, we shall see, had no religion, as such, but instead had what could be described as a deeper knowledge of reality, a science and religion that were both integrally combined into a way of life. Education is mankind's greatest natural resource. Only through total education can mankind truly ensure a balanced and harmonious future, and in the world such as ours, education should be free and mandatory. With proper and open education everything else falls into place. The scholastic institutions we have established for ourselves are in fact highly detrimental to the pursuit of true learning and the current distribution of selected knowledge based on the economic ability of the individual can ultimately only lead to a breakdown of our society such as we are even now beginning to witness on our streets. Yet even with this, education is always one of the lowest expenditures in the budgets of any given nation. Education and knowledge should not be the property of an elitist club greedily hoarding its wealth, but a free and open establishment designed for the benefit and progress of the whole of mankind.